Welcome back to Adobe InDesign CC. In this tutorial, we're going to explore the power of layers. So right now, I'm looking at this background color. I'm not really digging it, so I'm going to select it and double click in here and change it to this sort of or yellow green, maybe. Um, just add a little more contrast to the background here. In my layer stack, you'll see that while this is selected, you can see it is on layer one. So your layers are over here, again, between the pages and the links. And I have a couple layers. I have two layers, in fact, um, in here. Now, uh, you can turn off the visibility with the eyeballs here, and you can see what's on layer one, what's on layer two here. Um, you can also lock down the layer. So by locking that, I can't grab that background color anymore. I can, however, grab these individual objects, okay? Now, the powerful thing about InDesign is it's kind of like working with Illustrator, Photoshop, and web all in one. It pretty much accepts all assets in all different ways. Um, so I'm going to add a text frame here and drag it out and um, the frame tool, rectangular frame tool here. And I'm actually going to place an image here. So I'm going to go file place and I'm going to go into the images folder and choose an illustrator file. So I'm going to choose this one here and click open. And there it is. And right now it's not fitting it proportionally. So I'm going to right click, choose fitting, and choose uh, to fit content proportionally so we could see it here. Now, uh, currently this is on layer two, but I want to add um, another layer and I want to actually organize these. So there's lots of different ways you can add layers. You can go up to here to the little uh, tab here and choose new layer. And that will pop up this open box where you can name it and so forth on here. Let's cancel out. You can click on this new layer, but it's just going to generically uh, drop it in. So I'm going to undo that by hitting Control-Z or Command-Z. What I like to do is hold Option or Alt on the PC and click at the same time. And that drags out the, the new layer dial box. And now I can name it as I create it. So I'm going to title this one Graphics. Um, it's going to have color green and pretty much everything. I definitely want to print. If you didn't want this particular layer to print, you could uncheck that. If it was something you didn't want to print but I'm gonna leave that on there um, everything else leave the default and basically click OK but right now it's empty so there's nothing on here what can I do well I can click on this layer and actually click on this little square here which will select all the graphics in here and I can simply drag that to the layer above so by doing that now it's on this layer so if I turn off the eyeball you'll see everything is in here now the only thing is the text is also in here, which I would want on its own layer. So let's utilize this layer two here. I'm going to double click on it. And uh, by double clicking on it, you have those same options. So I'm going to call this text and um, I'm going to click OK. So now I have the text selected here, nothing else. And it's this little green icon here. Just like in Photoshop and Illustr well, Illustrator, you can drag it to the next layer and there it is. So now text is on here and I can turn on and off. You can see it there. If I wanted to, uh, I want if I wanted to rename the background elements, I could double click, call them um, background elements or something like that, which would be appropriate. And if I didn't want to print these for whatever reason, I could uncheck this print layer, click OK, and you'll see that it's shown in italic, meaning that if I was going to save this as a PDF or actually print it, the background elements would not be visible. So it would show up as white here. Um, anytime I want to undo that, of course, just double click in the gray and recheck that print layer and click OK. Now what's great about layers is you can um, drag and drop them. You can rearrange them however I want. So if I want the graphics to be uh, below the text, I can do that. If I twirl open the graphics, there are several graphics in here. And if I actually click on a graphic and drag it over, you can see how this one is below the other ones here. Now you can always do the right click arrange and bring front or bring forward. That's one way to work. But knowing that it is here, I can simply um, select it and drag it above the other one. And now I can see this one's above the other one. And that's really the important thing about, um, let me undo that, I accidentally grab the inside the image and not the uh, frame itself. The really important thing about layers and the way they work, uh, it, it's a stacking order. So the top layer is the one that's most visible, so the text here. So if I put any images in here, like I'll uh, lock the text layer here, 
minimize this, if I drag this transparent graphic in here, it'll be behind the text. The text will be on top. Okay, so you can see that there. Um, in the layers palette, anything above individual parts will be the most forward. So this image here, which if I turn on and off, is the, um, uh, let's see, some other image. I don't know exactly where the image is at. Oh, it's this one here. <laughs> So it is the um, the AI file. It is the most forward image. If I click on one of these and turn it off and on, you can see that one is in front of this one. Now they're not directly on top of each other, but that's the way the stacking works with layers. Okay. So uh, you can twirl and collapse these layers. Uh, you can add, delete. Like if I wanted to delete this whole layer, I could trash it after I unlock it. I don't really want to do that, but I could. <laughs> Um, but what layers allow you ultimately do is keep your graphics, your layout incredibly organized. I highly recommend layers. They give you tremendous flexibility. And in certain instances, you want to lock down your layers. Like the background here is definitely an issue where after a while I'd be dragging images in here and possibly messing it up. So I would lock that down and now I don't have that issue. Now I have the freedom to align these however I want without interfering with accidentally selecting the background here. So that's an overview of layers. Please take advantage of it. And I hope you enjoy this tutorial in Adobe InDesign CC. Until next time, cheers.